And in these places where we have these hydrothermal vents, it's like an oasis of life because you have these vent systems that bring hot water at temp high temperatures, couple hundred degrees, that are also full of all kinds of nutrients like iron and sulfur and, and calcium. And that means that life can thrive. The bad news is, every few years, the whole place gets totally destroyed by a volcanic eruption. Welcome to Wavelengths where we talk about our planet with experts from Scripps Institution of Oceanography, covering everything from the deep sea to the edge of the atmosphere. I'm Kate Furby, a marine biologist and journalist. I got my PhD here a few years ago, and now I'm back, learning more about what's happening at Scripps. I'm here with Dr. Ross Parnell-Turner, a marine geophysicist. Thanks so much for joining us today. I'm really excited to talk about underwater volcanoes. I was wondering if we could start with you setting the scene. We're actually here right next to the ocean. Can you give us an idea of what the ocean floor looks like here in San Diego? So the ocean floor here, you might think of as being completely flat, but actually if we take all the water away and look down there, it's actually got a lot of uh, steep slopes and a lot of interesting topography. And right here off the coast of San Diego, we have a very deep series of canyons that go hundreds of feet deep under the water. So it's definitely not flat. Which part of that do you study? So I study the part where the, um, in the middle of the oceans where the tectonic plates are spreading apart and are creating new ocean floor. So that's what we call seafloor spreading? Exactly is yep. like the two plates moving apart. Exactly, you can kind of think of it as like a, a pair of plates that are spreading apart and having a new pile of crust being formed at the point where they break apart. Is there a pie analogy? Can we do a pie analogy? Um, there isn't really a pie analogy. <laughs> okay, can you tell us what is this? In the middle of the seafloor spreading, we have these things called hydrothermal vents, which have very hot water that's full of all kinds of nutrients and minerals that are really useful for animals to thrive. And this is um, the case from a creature called a tube worm. But uh, originally it would have been about two meters long and it would have been straight and maybe an inch in diameter. So these are, are pretty dynamic places. They're just sort of periodically getting paved over by lava and then I assume sort of sprouting up in a new location? Exactly, yeah. So these tube worms reproduce by um, generating larvae and lots of creatures down there use have a larval cycle. And so after an eruption, those larvae can recolonize um, the seafloor. Cool. So it's amazing how quickly life can come back. What causes the volcanic eruption? So here's the Earth, and one kilometer underneath the seafloor is a magma chamber that is slowly filling up. And above that, you have seawater percolating down and heating up. It gets so hot that it zooms back up through these deep vents, and those are the hydrothermal vents that you see on the seafloor. And this is where we see all the life. There's tube worms and crabs and octopuses down there. And this area is warm, it's full of nutrients, and it's a great place to live. However, every once in a while, the magma erupts, flooding molten lava out of the crack between the two plates, making it not such a good place to live. So this is what we look for on our expeditions. We have an underwater robot that we use to put instruments into the vents to measure the temperature and the chemistry of the water. So we can sense if the volcano is going to erupt soon. You're gonna take a little robot and sort of send it into this deep crack in the ocean to try to discover more about how the Earth is formed. That's exactly right. What are you hoping to find? So we're hoping to find evidence the volcanic system is getting ready to erupt. And we're hoping that it's gonna erupt in the next couple of years so that we can take a really close look of what happens when a seafloor eruption happens. So we've been standing in front of this biggest map I've ever seen for a little bit now. Can you tell me what we're looking at here? So we're looking at uh, a map of the seafloor that's actually a sonar image that was created by this underwater robot called Sentry that we use to map the seafloor. 
And this map is our study area. The area that has erupted in the past are all these black splodges you can see on the map. And the main area where the two plates are spreading apart is this line that goes up here, which is called the axial volcanic trough. And in terms of distance, uh, the span across this valley is a couple of hundred meters, which is about the same size as Scripps Pier, which is just out there. Why is this important? So it's important because um, if you think about our planet is covered, about 60% of it is covered by the oceans. And we still don't really understand how the bottom of the oceans, like how the seafloor is created. And in places like this, we can actually observe that process of seafloor creation in real time or near enough real time. And so it helps us understand things like how um, these eruptions work, but also how it affects the creatures that live on the seafloor.